and gentlemen, today is the night of February and you're watching the ID Reviews. Now we're gonna talk about the causes of World War I. Next to me I have Marie and Céline and they have written a book about World War I. That's right, Jill, we wrote a book, A Small Army in the Great War. This book is about World War I and you can buy it for a small price of 20 euros. To talk about the cost of World War I is a big deal, so we made a video extract to explain you a little bit of how World War I started. So we're filming this in 2016, which means that the Great War started 102 years ago. Most historians are agreed that the event that started the Great War um, was the assassination of the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand in 1914. Now, it wasn't a great day for France to visit Bosnia, since it was St. Vitus Day that day, which was a celebration for Slavic nationalists. And an action group chose to celebrate the day by killing Franz Ferdinand. Mm -hmm. Your friend, your nephew Franz Ferdinand didn't see my pistol, so no, if you think that they did, Austria will be fine. You want a war, Princip? Go tell all your friends of the Black Hand, because you will need them. My trigger finger itches, so you best watch out. Your tiger soon, your urg soon, and I will crush you under Austria's heel, you. They didn't show him at random. He was the heir apparent of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Franz wasn't liked very well. Not by his uncle, the head of the Austro-Hungarian, certainly not by the Bosnian nationalists, and also not really by everyone else in Europe. Your friend's uncle didn't like him as the emperor of Austro-Hungaria. He felt the responsibility to, to, you know, do something. Otherwise, the Bosnian nationalists would feel like they could expense their territory at the expense of the empire. So, despite what you hear about World War I being pointless, this makes sense at some point. Now, it's a bit of a schoolyard bully, but it does make sense. If Serbia can get bigger, then all the other places will think that they can have nations too. And soon enough, you don't have an empire anymore. So there's still some uh, debate about whether Princip and his fellows are alone or as a part of a bigger conspiracy by Serbian government. But the Austrians certainly thought there was a bigger involvement, um, which is why it, the whole thing uh, ended up in a war. Uh, you probably think, who the hell is Princip? Well, Princip was a member of a very sounding black hand, uh, a group who wants to create a, a better uh, Serbia that includes Bosnia. And Princip also knew about the plans of the assassination of France. And almost a month after the assassination, Austria issued an ultimatum to Serbia. An ultimatum is like a last dead wish, but then in the war. And Austria made the demand so hard that Serbia had inevitably reject the ultimatum and start the war. Now, why did it take a month? Well, Austria was afraid if they would attack Serbia, the Russian bear would then attack Austria-Hungaria. What? I should be afraid? You better watch out for my ally Russia. Back up, friend Joseph. Serbia is my brother. Same blood, same religion, same Slavic complexion. We're packing more army than you've got salami. This time, my solution is your dissolution. Beware the Russian bear. Wow, the Russian bear just changed someone else's tone. Now, let's get further with the story. The Austrians were afraid, uh, so they spent a month talking to their ally Germany to make sure they had their back. Okay. Everyone knows me, I the Kaiser. Ooh. I will learn in a second the first one to guess, but neither God follow the sequel kicks ass. Jokers to the east of me and clones to the west of me, but us and Gears, my mates, we're gonna eradicate the Serbian beast. <laughs> so back off cousin Nick and don't say to make and tell your friend tell your mates and friends not to interfere. This ain't no prance, it's a German war dance. Wow, they've got moves, but back to the story. 
5 or 6 July, Austria got a blank check, uh, a promise of German that they would help Austria if Russia mobilized. It was clearly that the Germans expected Austria to move quickly after the assassination and not like wait for another 20 days. At this point, timing becomes really important. So let's take a look on the calendar. So when the Serbs received the Austrians' ultimatum, Russia declared itself to be in a period preparatory to a war, which sounds a lot like mobilization. The Serbs rejected Austria's ultimatum on July the 28th, but they made their own rejection sound like a capitulation. So the Germans thought that the war had been averted. And they were kind of surprised when Austria suddenly declared war to Serbia, even though the Austria army wasn't actually ready to start fighting. Then, on July 3rd, Russia exited its period of preparatory to war and actually mobilized. Germany warned the Russians to stand down, but two days later, on August 1st, France mobilized its armed forces in support of Russia. And that same day, Germany mobilized and declared war on Russia. So, if you're keeping up the score, you see that Austria and Germany were the first to start war on the 28th of July and the 1st of August, respectively. Then Germany declared war to France on the 3rd of August. The Germans marched through Belgium to invade France quickly, so they could focus on Russia. German troops crossed Belgium border on August 4th, and the British issued an ultimatum to the Germans, telling them to get out of Belgium or else. Germany chose or else, and Britain declared war to Germany. So by the 4th of August 1914, all the major powers involved in World War I were officially in war with each other. So that's how an act of terrorism in a Bosnian city turned into the first major European world war. A war that still resonates today. The Serbs and the Austrians probably thought that the war could stay localized in the Balkans. Especially since there had been previous conflicts in that region that hadn't blown up a world war. That was an amazing movie. Thank you, thank you. The next subject today is the Twitter file, and the winner of today is George S. Patton, and he says The objective of war is not to die for your fatherland, but to make your enemy die for his. Thank you for watching, um, and now you have set one step closer to the ideal world.